So, is it all true? What have you heard already? That illness. It thickened the bones. It accelerated the healing process and tissue regeneration. Is that all true? Every word. But if that's what it was doing, why call it an illness? The Lepidopterans made a nest out of the human body where they could eat and multiply. An illness is what it is. But then? Where do you want me to start? From the beginning. <sighs> I'm old, Mr. Manny. My memory is not one of my strong points. Well, for example, why do they call you Madame Svenska? A name is just a trace. It is our business card, our identifier. It presents us to the world. What does it tell our story or really describe who we are? I swear I know three or four idiots with the same exact name. <laughs> well, yes. But we are not made of that name. It is given to us. Other people choose it for us, whether it suits us or not. It doesn't tell us who we really are. That name will not give us any answers. It is only through growing old that we become the answer to the questions of our childhood. And living in Sweden the last 30 years has definitely inspired this affectionate moniker. And so, Madam Svenska, it is. And yet you come back to Italy. Why? Because I forgot. But I also forgot that I had promised to remember. Tell me. Please excuse me. Sometimes my memory needs to be jogged. There's always been a song that as well as the name you refer to so much, has labeled my whole life, has given it a name, and it's from a name. If you can believe how bizarre and sometimes unbelievable my confused memories are to describe, that all this began.
Feels like it's gonna rain again. Yes, hello. I'm Dr. Reed from the Santa Margarita Institute. I'm sorry, but Mr. Felton is no longer a patient. I know. This is why I'm here. Hello? Uh, anyone? Hello? The gate was open. Are you there? Hello? Is anyone there? Good evening, Miss I am... Miss Reed, you already told me at the intercom, and as I already told you, Mr. Felton is no longer a patient at the Santa Monica Institute. I, know. I came here voluntarily, outside the Institute. So what do you want? I am personally re-examining your case. Causes, reagents... I strongly believe there are alternative ways and probably other experiments that are worth a try. 
I am fighting with the Institute to recognize there are other adequate remedies for your husband's pathology. Oh, no, please. I'm just assisting him. I'm his nurse. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know. Uh, it's okay. I suppose you want to talk to him. Thank you. I apologize for the darkness, but Mr. Felton's sight has been damaged and immensely compromised because of the disease. Anyway, I am Gloria. Oh, and please, refrain from smoking inside. Mr. Fountain hates the smell of smoke. Sorry. Please, this way. Bad habit. Smoking? Yes, such a shame. You should quit. You have no idea how bad this is for you. Not only for your health, but it's also very expensive. Money and time wasted. I have so much to do every day, I couldn't waste time with such a bad habit. Do you assist Mr. Felton all day? Oh no, from midday to 8 p.m. Then I go back home. I live near here. If needed, he can contact me with a pager, but that's not often. His wife takes care of him when I'm off. What can you tell me about her? I met her just a couple of times. She's usually out or locked in her bedroom when I'm here. Let's say they don't seem to get along. I didn't know. But, you know, when she's home, she listens to the same music, the same song, over and over. This way, please. And Mr. Felton will be here in a few minutes. Okay. believe in God, miss? Well, it would be too easy, wouldn't it? I believe in people's willpower. Everything else is not God, but an aptitude or mankind's cruelty. This is the kind of fairy tale I prefer at my age. When you're worn out from an incurable disease, you start having some doubts. Why is there so much life in such small but lethal creatures? An arbiter. That's all we need. For what? It's wrong and crazy. It's human nature. That same nature in which we are equals to those ants eating each other. But, pardon me, I forgot my manners. Please, sit down. Dr. Reed, I suppose? <sighs> Sorry, Mr. Felton. Pleased to meet you. So, you already met Gloria? Yes, she let me in. She's a great reference, extremely hardworking, but back to us. I don't recall seeing beautiful doctors like you at the Institute, Dr. Reed. <laughs> I am flattered, Mr. Felton. I arrived at the Institute just a few months after you left. And you left because... Inadequacy of the sanitary treatments within the structure. 
That's right. And in a few words? In a few words. They didn't know how to treat my case, and they left me there to die. But it seems that other issues took over. I once or twice refused to go through exams. Mr. Felton, is there anything I can do for you? Oh, Gloria, yes. See if Dr. Reed needs anything. Oh, no. May I offer you a cup of tea or coffee? Espresso? No, thank you. As you wish. How about you, Mr. Felton? No, thank you. I'll keep entertaining our guest. You can go now. You're diagnosed? 1958? Yes, indicatively. Some friends and I contracted the disease while traveling to Egypt, and it got worse. In addition to the disease, the first exam showed some inconsistency. Some hormonal deficiency? Overdose of non-prescribed drugs, opiates? Anoxal? Wasn't it recalled in the mid-60s? Doctor, don't you think that nowadays there are ways to obtain drugs without any prescription? Uh, I believe so. According to your file, you still receive your disability pension. Even better, it seems that the beneficiary is your wife, Ariana Gala. Exactly. She's the one who takes care of me when Gloria is off. How about your daughter? My daughter? Celeste has never come back home. Disappeared. She was adopted, am I right? Mm. The investigators confirmed that she intentionally left. They never suspected a kidnapping since there was no ransom request. How about Weeman? Wasn't he a suspect? A flash in the pan. An idiot who brought confusion by sending warnings and threats. And her birth parents? Dr. Reed. Young girls often decide to just go. And this is what my daughter decided to do with... Jennifer. What did you say? At times, you'd call her Jennifer. No, my Mr. daughter... Mr. Felton, what has really happened to your daughter? I just told you! How about the off-the-record version? I am not sure where you're trying to go with this, but I won't tolerate... I don't have the strength for this now! I know you've been trying to forget her, but this picture might help you to. What is this? Where did you get this picture? Isn't she your daughter? Celeste, or has you called her? Jennifer? I asked you a question! The back of the picture says Jennifer. There is no Jennifer! You thought I was stupid, didn't you, Mr. Felton? Do you... do you really think I'd come here without knowing what I'm Who talking about? Who are you, and why did you come here? Did you come to my home to threaten me with your condescending Threatening tone? you? So maybe I should ask your wife then. She's not home. Seems like she is. Mr. Felton, I just talked to the director of the Institute on the phone. They have never heard of Dr. Reed. She is not what she claims to be. Well, Miss Reed, if that is your real name, your time here has ended. Please, leave my property. Miss Gloria will escort you out. Please follow me. Mr. Felton, please, tell me what you did to your daughter. Good evening. Follow me. You know the way. How do you even... How do I do what? How do you even sleep at night? You use people's lives regardless of the pain you cause. The Feltons have been through a lot. And they are good people. Gloria, a young girl disappeared. We all know the story, unfortunately. A burden that the Feltons will have to carry for the rest of their lives. Celeste just left them. If that was the case, there was a motivation behind it. And it threatened her life.
Mrs. Felton. Are you here? Please, Mrs. player got jammed again, right? Yes, I know. You, you keep on telling me we need to buy the new gadgets on the market. Promise, promise, promise. How can I say no to you? Now get some rest, love. My little Jennifer. Jennifer? Who's 
playing around in my house. Go around and rummage in other people's things. This is my house. You cannot do this.
toe, and on his farm he had a sickle, E-I-E-I-O, E-I-E-I-O.
So, you like to go around and rummage in other people's things. Enjoy your stupid game. Who likes to snoop inside people's houses? Noisy! I knew it! I will make you regret you a bore! What are you doing here? Who's... Stop! Who was it? Here you are! Still here. Go around and run it.
This house is not open to the public! Mesmerism session with drug injection. Patient is Richard Felton. Mr. Felton, I remind you that you were sedated with a dose of phenoxyl and submitted to the constant swing of the metronome. Can you hear me? Yes. Breathe deeply. Keep your eyes on the metronome. I... I can't... Stay me. calm. Keep control of yourself. We are here for you, Mr. Felton. What day were you born? February 16th. Can you tell me which day today is, or your wife's name? Uh, Ariana. We're in March, I think. I don't remember. I can't remember. That's normal. It's part of the mesmerism process. Stay focused. Keep your eyes on the metronome. You are now in oblivion. What is the first thought that comes to you? Celeste. On the swing. Happy. Celeste, can you see her? Keep visual contact. I see her back. She, she's still swinging. She, she can't hear me. Why doesn't she hear Mr. me? Mr. Felton, keep calm. What you see is not material. It's a reflection That's of your subconscious. That's my entire fault. I, I knew this would happen. That she would escape. We were supposed to protect her so that they wouldn't find her. Who are they? But I never thought she'd come back. I thought her. Do you mean Celeste came back after she disappeared? She wasn't my little girl. No, she wasn't Celeste. She was Jennifer. Mr. Felton, who are you talking about? Who's Jennifer? When my father came back in, in 1930, it was like he was dead. No physical wounds, just broken inside. He changed. I have never liked or loved him very much, but the man that came back from Ethiopia was far from being the man that once left us. He came back to himself pretty quickly, but not how I wanted. Mr. Felton, were you abused by your father? Oh, no, never. He was a good man. Very strict, yes. A monster, but, but not that kind of monster. He never touched me. I, I was a disappointment to him. A wimp. Very gosh, my daughter. Do you think your daughter's disappearance is related to your relationship with your father? She, she should have never been born. My father, he, he hurt me to prevent me from her. Is this why you came here, Doctor? I hope you found what you were looking for. I tried to warn you. 
You should have listened. Is it really worth it to put yourself into this story? Stop, you bitch! <laughs> Some things die and stay dead forever. Other things die and just linger in time. Uh, sir, sooner or later, everyone will find out the truth. I already told you the truth. My daughter left us just one afternoon. We never saw her again. Fucking liar! You said that she came back, didn't you? Oh! <laughs> you don't understand. You, you have no idea of what I've been through. The pain. <laughs> and didn't you think of the pain your daughter's been through? Oh no, Celeste was the only bond between my wife and I. <laughs> Our marriage was more of a business deal than love. It was one of those arranged marriages where only the parents-in-law love each other. This has nothing to do with your daughter. On the contrary, it has everything to do with her. After she disappeared, Ariana and I were divided. But you said you were protecting Celeste. From who? It's more than you can handle, miss, and you would not understand. It's true. I might not be able to understand. But right now, I believe Celeste decided to leave be because she was terrorized by your morbid intentions. No, it's not true. And yet, sometime later, she comes back home to the lion's it's den. It's not true. One afternoon, she knocked on the door. I, I couldn't believe it. She was there. But it wasn't Celeste. It, it was Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer. Then you came in. God bless you. And thanks to you, I... I finally realized that Jennifer was to blame for my pain, my disease. I could not let her go away again. So one night I slipped into her bedroom, and there she was, tempting me. I could not let her hurt us again. No, can't be. And yet, you saw her body. I, I had to. I, I didn't have any other choice. You're disgusting. Murderer! You're a murderer! Oh God, forgive me. Forgive me. I was just following her orders. You, you came to us to, to free us from evil. Oh, God. Sinner. 
Then come the flames, and it is from the flames that God showed me the truth. You were one of us. You deceived us all. Wait! Stay back! Jennifer?
born from the flames, from the ashes. The responsible authorities are trying to make light of what has happened. Now let's go to the report. Chodoscoro. A phone line repairman was attacked this morning in an underground car park. Surveillance cameras show a blonde woman in suit with an elegant, innocent air about her who approached the man with the pretext of lighting a cigarette. <laughs> The woman then attacked the man, wounding his head. The wanted person, aged between 30 and 40, then browsed through the man's briefcase containing confidential information about the users who asked for the phone line to be repaired. She stole the woman and started driving to an unknown destination, leaving the man unconscious. The authorities are now checking for any evidence that the woman might be looking for a particular address. Although the man is now out of danger, he has suffered lesions and a concussion, and has been admitted to a hospital nearby. A few hours ago, the authorities provided an identikit of a woman based on the victim's description. We invite you to contact us if you find yourself in the presence of this woman, or if that you have woman seen a specific looks like you. you. Who, who are you? I hope you'll forgive me for before, but but you mustn't touch my things. My things are mine. You mustn't. That photo in the loft. What happened to that door? Richard made it disappear. He doesn't want anyone to go in. What do you mean? That door no longer exists. There is now a wall. A wall behind the fireplace. A fireplace? There. 
You're gonna find what you're looking for. Did you know that Felton brought the monster? Butterflies. It's what he frees you. Did you know that here it is full of butterflies? <laughs> Ah! <sighs> 
night. We just curl up in that bed. Dad locks us in. And I can hear him pray and cry through the wall. Mommy confessed.
They can't be the same person. Same. Jennifer? Jennifer? Richard Dean Felton. Split personality? Unhealthy upbringing by deceased father. I was a disappointment to him. A wimp. Overdose of hormones and testosterone. I once or twice refused to go through exams. This is why he wouldn't go further through exams. They would have understood. Now I understand why he was obsessed with his growing daughter, and why he started calling her Jennifer. She was everything his father never wanted him to be. Jennifer. Thank you.
I don't want to look around for you. I'm not a child. <laughs> Anybody here? Hey, Gloria! I'm here! 
I'm here, please help me. Please, what on earth is going on? Be careful, they're armed. Who are you talking about? Him and his damn psychopath. Uh, okay, I'm calling the police. Yes, do it now. Hey, wait, are you still here? I am, stay calm. Please, don't leave me. Listen to me, go to the infirmary on the first floor. I'm the only one who holds the key. We'll wait for the police to gather there. Okay. 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 What happened? Oh, Gloria, please, close the door! What's going on? Close this damn door! Oh, God, oh calm no. down. Tell me what happened. Oh, my God. Please, I'm here now. Can you hear me? I can't believe that. Oh, my. Your heart is going to explode. No. Calm down, please. You have to take something. Where is the... Oh. I don't have any idea what happened, but now you're making me anxious. Mr. Felton killed his wife, ripped her apart, but he still believes he killed his daughter. God, I can't, I, I can't, I can't believe it. They always slept in separate rooms. Their marriage was a disaster, disgusting. Even though Ariana knew about Richard's past, or Jennifer, but this. You also knew? Of course I knew, but I would have never imagined that and you didn't do anything? You indulged it. You kept on supporting his barbaric experiences. The mesmerism, the phenoxyl, everything else. I know that his disease, his personal matters, or the disappearance of his daughter made him a killer. I knew the cure wasn't going anywhere. It was more of a necessity. An, an necessity. addiction. An addiction? It doesn't make much difference how we call it. We don't choose our cure or our vice. They are the ones that rule. Don't you smoke? Are we seriously talking about this? No. I'm just saying that I knew about his bad habits. As his nurse, I knew how unorthodox and how inefficient they were. But that doesn't make me his accomplice. We have to go. They'll be here any minute now. Is there anyone with Mr. Felton? Some kind of weird red nun. One from the painting? Here, in the house? We have to stay here. Leaving now is out of the question. There are bars and the windows and doors. We're blocked. Here, drink this. What is this? It's just to slow your heartbeat down. Did you also know that Celeste came back and left again? I didn't want to believe it. He kept on saying it. He saw his Jennifer and everything. And I would even be Jennifer to him at times. Richard suffered from his father's anger. A crazy, lunatic psychopath. Split personality. Forced to live as a man against her will. All her life. It's not surprising this happened. The police are on their way? Of course. I called them a little while ago. <sighs> Gloria, how did you get in? The doors and windows have bars. We're trapped inside. Until now, I've had your keys. Your keys? You left them there on purpose until I found them. I know who you really are. <gasps> Trap me. I missed you a lot, sister. The child was dreaming in rent phase with open wings of moth as the blaze. And when his mother screamed that much, a black red death bestowed his touch. <laughs> Uh... <sighs>
you already. Stop talking or I'll cut your tongue off. Can you 
hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Stop moving! Stop moving! Oh, here you are. What did you do? Why? You're fucking sick! Oh god. No! 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 <laughs> Follow the swing! <laughs> Don't stop looking at it! You are both fucking sick! You poisoned your brain with all of your bullshit! You are sick murderers! Listen to me, <laughs> bitch! You think I didn't see what you were hiding in your pretty purse? You wanted to drug me, make me blind, right? Just like the old times. I loved you. I trusted you. You were one of us. But you don't deserve to be. I survived not once, but two times. Sorry. Sorry. Ah. <laughs> You're not my sister anymore. <laughs> Listen, who doesn't live can't remember. What kind of life is it to suffer that way? You deserve peace. No, no, no. Mr. Felton, please don't listen to her! She is Jennifer. She is your daughter. She represents everything you couldn't have. It was taken from you. And now, she's in front of you. This is how you killed your wife, Mr. Felton! Listen to me. Don't listen You've to her! you killed the other times, but you I'm can't Rosemary. now. She can't we escape. Met this afternoon. You know how to do end. Do you remember? You know what you I, have to do. I gave you that picture. The picture of when you were a little girl. Remember? I told you. I could have helped you. Help you find a cure. Oh, no. Oh, Mr. Felton. Everything. No! Please. I beg you. Stop. No! No! Oh, my God.
thought I'd let you go. No, no, not this time. Celeste was a wise one. I don't think you share that attribute. Don't you understand? You can't escape like she did. was a wise one. I don't think you share that attribute. Oh, 
pathetic. You can't just kill me with cortisone. I should have never have come here. 
It's all my fault. It would have happened anyway. They didn't give a damn about the disease. They only used it to improve the phenoxyl. The moths were the final piece for the cure, and to show the world how much they were worth. They had noticed how moths were acting on Felton after he caught the disease in Egypt in 58. Oh, he deserved it. We were all test animals at the plantation. They used us. They made us believe we had been touched by the hand of God, giving us the disease as a sign. But then trouble came. The eyes burning, the bandage, the horrible pain in the head. All of this? Just forget. Phenoxyl was created as an antipsychotic drug for war veterans suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. To forget the horrors. As a father who ruined his daughter's life, forcing her to live as a man. Felton is just like all of us. He was a victim. He could only count on the results of the experiments of the plantation when they withdrew the drug from the market because of its crazy side effects. Wyman, that fucking bastard, synthesizing parasites and mixing them with the drug, only showed him he could do better. That it was possible to modify and control memories. Our memories. But we were only able to control the moths and be sick. Very sick. And those damn memories would come up again sooner or later. Now I understand. Felton always told the truth. He just wanted to protect Celeste from all of this. From himself. From his Jennifer. The sessions were for her to just forget. Forget everything forever. And he was the one to push her to leave. And eventually, she did. She ran away. But I still have unanswered questions. It's not too late. This is not your end yet. It may be the end of everything. And maybe we're already dead. And neither of us knows it. <laughs> I'm not the one who is crazy here. Maybe we both are. You could have been one of us. No, I couldn't have. Yes, you could have, sister. But I could never forget that day. All oh, the screams, the flames. How could you? You wanted to propagate it as a sign of God. This was not a gift. This was not from God. It was fucking stupid science. And those two things have never been compatible. We believed it. It's true. And we were wrong. But you left us there to die. I, I don't... I, I don't know. I... I don't remember. I, I can't remember. It's all confusing and I, I anyway, don't... It's over now. No, I don't want to die rotting in hatred. I've hated all my life. I don't care anymore. It doesn't matter who you were, what we were. You are what you have become. Look at yourself. I'm nothing like this. This is all just farce, discount store garbage.
You know, now I remember when I was young and I would lie on the grass. Oh, I loved doing this. I would stay for hours staring at the emptiness and seeing myself somewhere else where I could go far away. And now all these memories hurt. That hurts so much. Why can't we just forget? Why? 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 Why do we have to remember? Because that is how we save our memories from oblivion. She is still alive. You will find her. I know you will find her on top of the world. What? If God is real, I hope he is made of this love. I hope you will both forgive me one day. I already have. Bad habit. Smoking. was in the bag? What did she find? A goodbye. A goodbye that spoke of hope. Hope? Do you mean to say that, despite everything, she was not resigned to the idea of finding her? No. Not at all. 